everyone. In this video, I would like to take a look at the derivative of a couple power functions. And what I'd like to do is look at a couple specific examples, try and build a pattern, and I want to use that to write a rule for the derivative of power functions. So to start off with, on the screen I have a reminder here of one way that we can define the derivative of a function. So we have this limit as h approaches 0, and it's f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So like I said, I want to start off with a couple specific examples. So let's start with just f of x is equal to x. Okay, so this is x to the first power. So this is a power function. So first thing, if I'm going to find this limit, let's start off by finding f of x plus h, which is just x plus h, substituting that in. And now let's go through and let's find the derivative. So f prime of x is going to be equal to the limit as h approaches 0. f of x plus h, we just found up above, is x plus h. We're subtracting the original function f of x, so we're subtracting x, and this is all over h. Now whenever we're doing a limit like this, the first thing we want to do is simplify as much as we can. So in the numerator, we have a positive x, we have a negative x, so those will simplify. So we end up with our limit, and we have h over h, which will simplify. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of 1. And the limit of a constant is always whatever that constant is. So in this case, the derivative of our function is just equal to 1. Okay, let's try another one. Like I said, I want to try and build a pattern here. So let's take a look at a second function. In this case, let's just go up in degree and let's look at the function x squared. So again, the first thing, I'm going to find g of x plus h because I know I'm going to need that in my limit. So here this is x plus h squared, which is x plus h times x plus h. And if we simplify all of that, we're going to get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. All right, so now let's plug everything in to our derivative. So g prime of x, this will be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 again. And now g of x plus h is going to be this trinomial that we found. From this, we're going to subtract our original function, which was x squared, and this is all over h. Just like we did on the last one, first thing we're going to do is try and simplify. So I see we are subtracting x squared, and I have a positive x squared, so these two terms will give me 0, so they cancel out. And simplifying, what we end up with is the limit, and then 2xh plus h squared all over h. And that works out good, because I see in the numerator, both of those terms have an h in them. So we could factor that out and simplify. So dividing out an h from both of those terms in the numerator, we end up with the limit of 2x plus h. And now that we're in this simplified form, to find my limit, I can just simply plug in 0 for h. So plugging in 0 here, we end up with the derivative of our function g. This is equal to 2x. Okay, so we have our first one, our derivative ended up at 1. The second one, our derivative is 2x. Why don't we try one more to see if we can come to any conclusions. So let's do one more function. Let's do h of x. And again, we'll go up in degree, and let's take a look at x cubed. Okay, first thing, I'm going to find h of x plus h. So here we have x plus h cubed. And if we multiply that all out, x plus h plus x plus h plus x plus h, we're going to end up with x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h cubed. 
All right, I like doing that ahead of time just to make it easier to plug into our derivative. So h prime of x, this is going to be equal to our limit as h approaches zero and h of x plus h, that's our expression we found up above. So I'll rewrite all of that. From that, we're gonna subtract our original function. So we're gonna subtract x cubed and all over h. So now we've done this twice, it's the same process. We'll simplify and see if we can evaluate this limit. I'm subtracting x cubed. I have a positive x cubed here and I'm subtracting x cubed there. So those two will cancel out. And then what I'm left with, the limit, and we have 3x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h cubed, all over h. And again, so what we're seeing is each of these three terms in the numerator has an h in it. So we, all of them have that common factor. So we can divide out an h from everything. And then what we're left with, we have our limit that has to come down to every step. And we have our limit of 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared. And just like on the last one, now that we're fully simplified, we can evaluate this limit by plugging in zero for h. So what we're gonna end up with, there's no h in this first term. We have three x times zero, and then we have zero squared. So all in all, our derivative, we end up with h prime of x is equal to x squared. Okay, so that gives me another derivative to consider. So I'm gonna bring all of these together and then we'll take a look and we'll compare our original functions to their derivatives. Okay, so I rewrote our original functions along with the derivatives that we just found. And I wanna see if we can notice any sort of pattern between the original function and the derivative. So in each case, for our functions, we are just going up in degrees. We have x to the first, x squared, and then x cubed. Taking a look at the derivatives, the derivative of my first function, this one is actually x to the zero, right? Anything to the zero power will give me one. So this is one x to the zero. My second derivative here, we have two x to the first, and then the last one for h, we ended up with three x squared. So if I compare the degree, of my derivative to the degree of the original function, in each case, it's going down by one. So here we started x to the first, it's going down to x to the zero. Here we have x squared, we went down to x to the first. And the same thing here, from x cubed to x squared. Well then the other thing we can think about is where are these coefficients coming from? So here we have a coefficient of one, for g prime of x, we have a coefficient of two, and for h prime of x, we have this coefficient of three. So if I think about where that's coming from, and I take a look at my original functions, what I notice is my exponent, so here's the first power, that's coming down out front. So one, that power comes down out front, and then my exponent is one less than what I started with. Here I have an exponent of two, that comes down out front, and then my exponent is one less than two. Here I have a three, this will come down, become the coefficient, and then my exponent is one less. So all of that, we can bring that together, and that gives us what we think about as the simple power rule. To write this in general notation, so let's say, if we have a function y is equal to x to the n power. So here we're just doing a general exponent. This can be any integer actually. So if we have that, then the derivative of y, so I'm write that as y prime, that is equal to, so I bring the exponent down out front, so this n comes down out front, and then I reduce my exponent by one. 
So n times x to the n minus 1 power. So just to give you a couple general examples, so let's say we have y is equal to x to the fifth. The derivative of that, the 5 is going to come down out front, and then I reduce the exponent by 1. So I end up with 5x to the fourth. Uh, or if I have y is equal to x to the tenth, so the derivative, the 10 comes down out front, and we reduce the exponent by 1, so we end up with 10x to the 9th. I can even do this with negative exponents. So let's say we have y is equal to x to the negative 2 power. It's the same process. So then our derivative, the negative 2 comes down out front, and we reduce that exponent by 1, so negative 2 x to the negative third power, which if I wanted to write it like this, I could move that exponent down into the denominator. So the simple power rule works with any integer. Later on, we will talk about how to work with any real number in the exponent. But for now, the simple power rule makes evaluating uh, power functions, finding their derivatives much, much easier. Oh, 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 oh,